Before we begin, I just want to let you know, because of my Japan trip, the channel's going on break. I'll be gone from November 1st to December 5th. So don't worry, you know when I'm coming back. Be patient, please. I really need this trip. What? You never tried homemade pasta? <laughs> now I'm not supposed to pass judgment, but give it a try, and then tell me if it's better than boxed pasta. Still not convinced? I'll teach you how to make some right now. And that's a great recipe. The noodle we're going to be making today is fresh homemade parpadelle, the widest slurpable noodle there is. Other than lasagna, it's the easiest noodle to make, and it's a great starting off point when it comes to homemade pasta. Anyway, enough jibber jabber, let's begin. Uh, to minimize the messiness, we're going to make the entire dough in a bowl. Now when it comes to the flowers, I like to do two parts all purpose and one part semolina flour. You can play around with the ratios if you want, but this is just my preference. Okay, make a little well in the center of your flower. Then add two eggs. Three tablespoons of water. And about half a teaspoon of salt. Grab yourself a barbecue fork and start whisking. First, beat the eggs nice and good. Then, slowly incorporate the flour. Okay, when it reaches a pasty consistency, stop whisking. Then, using a silicone spatula, just fold it in on itself and begin working it with your hand. Okay, when it comes into a nice cohesive bowl, massage it out on the surface like this. Okay, if it's still sticky, dip it in the flour. Okay, once the pasta forms into a somewhat sticky dough like this, it's ready. So wrap this up in saran wrap and refrigerate this for at least half an hour. Okay, it's been half an hour, our dough has rested. It's time to roll it out. And I highly, highly recommend a pasta roller machine. Sure, you can do it with a rolling pin, but this just gives you cleaner results. Now, when working with homemade pasta, there are three letters that you need to keep in mind. A, B, F, always be flouring. Our pasta is quite sticky, and if we don't keep constantly flouring it, it'll stick to the rollers and to itself once we cut it. So to begin, just cut off a piece of dough, flatten it out in your hand, then roll it through the pasta machine on its widest setting. Fold it into thirds, insert it widthwise. Okay, fold it into thirds a few more times, and insert it in again lengthwise. Okay, now we can begin rolling it even thinner. Remember, always be flouring. So insert it in lengthwise, and roll it out. Now it depends on what kind of pasta roller you're using, but you want to go second to last thinnest setting. For this pasta machine, that's a six. Okay, this is getting to be a little long. Cut it in half. All right, once you rolled it on through, let's cut this into as perfect a rectangle as we possibly can. Set the scraps aside, we'll roll those out later. Let's loosely roll it up like this. Cut off the imperfect bits and just put them in our scrap pile. Now then, when it comes to making parpadelle, we're gonna half, then half the halves. But do not press down, just seesaw it back and forth like this and let gravity do some of the work. Okay, we cut that in half. Now let's cut this half in half and this half in half. Let's unfurl these. All right, give them a nice dusting. 
put them onto a tray loosely like this. Repeat this process until all the dough has been rolled out. Oh, and uh, do not pile all the pasta on top of each other. They're gonna to clump together. Just make sure they're well floured and have them spread out on a tray like this. And bada bing, the pasta is complete. With the pasta complete, it's ready for just about any sauce you throw at it. Especially the one I have in mind. What is it exactly? Tune in into the next episode. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, smash the like button. If you really liked the video, become a subscriber and hit the bell notification icon. I upload every Thursday. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram and support me on Patreon. And yes, 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 I know PewDiePie moved onto the verge and where his dog barks. It's just that the only time my dog seems to bark is when another dog walks past the front of the house. Jeez, yeah, the one time I want you to bark, you're completely mute.